In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful dappled texture of light using the Westcott Optical Swap. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here. And if you've been watching on my channel, you may know that I've recently introduced a brand new modifier that I designed in collaboration with Westcott. It's called the Westcott Optical Spot. Now this modifier is something that I use all the time because it allows you to create truly unusual lighting, just really beautiful lighting. How the modifier works is it has a lens on the end that allows you to project patterns and textures of light onto your subject. Everything from a slice of light to dappled light to patterns and swirls, anything you can imagine. And so for this particular image, I wanted to take you behind the scenes as I create a fashion image where I used a dappled lighting effect in order to create a shot that had just a little bit more texture and interest to the light. So let's take a look at that. We'll begin with the concept. Now the model was presented to me with a beautiful green top and a green skirt. And so I was trying to figure out how could I shoot this look in a way that wouldn't look too much like a catalog or a portrait? What could I do to make it look high fashion or make it look more interesting? So my concept began with the background. I wanted to shoot something monochromatic, green on a green background. And so I used a hand-painted background by Gravity Backdrops. And specifically, this is one with the heavy texture. So if you go to their website or if you're shopping for one of these, they list whether it has light, medium, or heavy texture. The reason I wanted a lot of texture to this background is because I didn't want the subject to just blend in, you know, a green shirt on a green background. So that texture gave me a little bit of separation. But the next way that I wanted to make this shot more interesting and add separation was by adding interesting light. I felt that if I went with just a big broad soft light source that it would start to look a little too catalog or portrait. So this is why I introduced my new modifier. I used a Profoto D2 with the Westcott optical spot to the right hand side of the frame. Now the optical spot comes with a kit lens. It's about 150 millimeter lens. It's very sharp, doesn't have chromatic aberration, and it is great for creating really tight slices of light. But if I want to light an entire scene head to toe, it's usually a little bit too focused. And this is why we designed the modifier so it can have interchangeable lenses. In fact, it has a Canon EF mount lens adapter. So what that means is if you have any EF lens, could be Sigma, could be Tamron, you could have an, an adapter for it, but any EF lens can fit on the end of it. And so for this particular shot, in order to light the entire scene head to toe, I used a Canon EF 24 to 70 2.8 lens. And so this gave me the spread of light that I needed. And then in this modifier, I put a gobo. A gobo stands for a go between, something that goes in between the light uh, and the subject. And I used a texture of these little leaves that I knew that if I soft focus them rather than having them sharp, what it would do is create just these little pockets of light in the shot. And that's what would give me that, that next level of interest to the scene rather than it just being flat light. Now, as I just mentioned, the lens that you have, whether it's the kit lens or whether it's the lens that you add, can be sharpened or softened so that you can define a pattern or make it more subtle. And so you're trying to decide what's the goal of the shot. Do I want really defined edges, like a slice of light, for example, or a pattern? Or am I trying to just go for more of just kisses of light and have it be soft focus, which was the goal for this shot. So that was the first light to the right hand side of the frame. But then of course I had a lot of shadows because there's only just little pockets of light, which is why I added the second strobe to the left hand side of the frame. And this again is a Profoto D2 with a zoom reflector. You'll notice though that it is pointed in a really weird way. I actually have it pointed at the ceiling. It is not pointed at the subject at all. And so I was experimenting with this shot beforehand. I put an umbrella on to fill in the shadows and it looked fine, but I ended up liking pointing the light into the ceiling because it created this really broad soft light source that was top down. So it carved out her cheekbones a little bit more and it kissed the top of her shoulders. And so I thought that this result gave me what I needed. It gave me a little bit of directionality to the light, but also filled in the shadows. And so this image was made only with two strobes the one strobe with the optical spot, and then another strobe bouncing off the ceiling. Now my ceilings are about 18 feet tall, but you could definitely do this if you're working with ceilings that were maybe 12 or 14 feet. But it wouldn't work 
if you were working in a space with say eight feet. In that case, I would probably go with something like a large umbrella with diffusion in the front or trying to bounce the light off of another wall. Now let's talk a little bit about our camera settings. For this shot, I shot with the Canon R5 and the Canon 24 to 70 2.8 lens and I was shooting at f4, I shot just a little bit narrower depth of field, just trying to blur out the background a little bit so that there would be enough separation. I thought that would also give maybe like a little bit more interesting, almost a natural light feel to the shot. So that's the setup here, but let's pop over and see what I captured in camera versus what was achieved in post-processing. All right, so this is where I ended up with the shot. I love how the toning ended, ended up looking. And I have like this little slice of light, this little pocket of light on her face, then a little bit across her chest and her shoulder, even a little bit of dappled light down her body. And then you can see, if you look at her shoulders in the top of her head, you can see what that second strobe, that zoom reflector bouncing off the ceiling, you can see the fact that it was bouncing off the ceiling, how it creates that top down light. That beautiful hair light that she has wouldn't be the same if you were filling in from the front. It would look totally different. So this is what I ended up with, but here's where we started. Now you'll notice that I ended up thinking that my frame was probably a little too tight to the top of her head. So I ended up Photoshopping and extending the background to give me a little bit more space. So you see that blank spot in this first image. Now overall, uh, I think this would work fine with the lighting, but it wasn't quite as moody as I was going for. So in post-processing, in my camera raw, I was specifically using Capture One, I went in and I added contrast, a little bit of clarity, I darkened down the image, and I desaturated the photograph. So I pulled out some of the color. And then from there, I decided to do a little bit of color grading, and I played around with the exact hue of that green. So instead of being as warm or uh, the, you know, the exact green I saw here, I started shifting it around so that I could see what different versions would look like. So this is what I landed on with my color grade. I ended up desaturating some of the greens, darkening it down, and then you'll also notice I added a little bit of yellow to her skin. I thought what that did is it gave me kind of this, this yellow-green palette and made it a little bit warmer overall, a little bit more analogous in the color scheme. So basically I'm working with greens and yellows. All of those hues are in this image. So looking at this shot, what do I find distracting? I think there's a little bit of weird texture perhaps on her elbow here. Uh, maybe some of the wrinkles in the top and which we tried to get out, but they, you know, even if we stretched it, if she moved, they instantly came back. So I thought that maybe removing some of those would clean up the image a bit uh, and maybe darkening down certain parts of the background that were a little distracting. So this is in camera. This is with the color grade and contrast adjustments in Capture One. And this is with my retouch. So you'll notice I darkened down the background, I smoothed out the arm, I got rid of some of the wrinkles. Also, there was a little bit of a highlight on her chest, which I thought was a little bit distracting, and I rounded out her hair. So from the original to the final image. Now for this shot, uh, it was really interesting because what I was trying to do is place the subject's face so that she would be in one of those pockets of light, but still have her move and twirl, which actually ended up being a little bit challenging. So I ended up with a few really beautiful shots. This is one of them. And here are a couple other images from this set. And so in my opinion, these images really move us away from a, a boring portrait or catalog shot, but they start to look fashion editorial. They start to look luxury. And yes, styling hair and makeup and background contribute to this, but in this case, I really think it was the combination of the lighting and the color grading that made this impact. Now, if you want to learn more about the optical spot, if you visit learnwithlindsay.com, I actually have a lighting recipe guide dedicated to many different setups of how to use this new modifier. So you can use it more subtle or environmental like you see here, or you can use it for just super eye-catching, unusual textures of light with gels and so much more. So be sure to check that out and I have it in the links in the description below, as well as all of the gear used in the making of this image. And so if you've enjoyed this and you wanna learn more, of course, I want you to like, subscribe, give me some love below, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.